surviving infidelity. 10 years into the relationship, I found out she was cheating in the beginning. A couple months ago, I, 31 male, found out that my now ex-fiance, 30 female, cheated on me for most of the first year of our relationship. We've been together 10 years now. We weren't very serious at that time, but we had agreed to be exclusive. It was with her old F buddy, who she hadn't seen in almost two years at that point. He was her high school crush, and while she didn't lose her first time to him, he lost his to her, and he was really her first actual anything. She hadn't seen him in almost two years, but apparently, he had been texting her to hang out for months, and she kept saying no, that she was with me, until she eventually gave in. Apparently, he had gotten much better at X, and that ended up being a thing a couple times a month for, about 7 months. She only stopped seeing him because she got an STD. I almost always wore protection back then, so I, luckily, never caught it. She said it was because he was more attractive than me, and that she enjoyed the action with him more. He would choke her, and be really rough, the deed was usually in his car at a parking lot somewhere, so it was more exciting, the interesting things he came up with. She also did a lot more intimately with him. In the past, when I would try talking to her about experimenting and spicing things up, she would shut down and refuse to talk to me, or admit there was anything wrong with our intimate life. She'd always say how amazing I was in bed, and that the intimacy was great as is. She would say that there's no point in giving me a handy, because I can get hard from playing with her, and that BJ's were selfish, because she doesn't get anything out of it. I told her foreplay is a two-way street, and I loved going down on her and slash or finger her, so she should reciprocate. When I would attempt to just take her and try new positions, or be rough, she would get noticeably uncomfortable, that I went off script doing something besides missionary. Our intimate life was very boring, and almost always missionary for the first two to three years, despite my efforts. Then one week, like a switch was flipped, it became more interesting and she started to open up. Though, she wouldn't really touch me or initiate it, until about two years ago when she had something of an actual awakening. Our bedroom life has been amazing since, and other than pretty typical ups and downs, our overall relationship has been very good. I found out about everything back in mid-October after a drunken slip of the tongue. I was optimistic at first that we could work things out, and I could get over it. I told her that she just needed to be open and honest with me, and just tell me the full truth. But she started drip-feeding me information, telling more lies and half-truths, as well as trying to make excuses, shift the blame, and downplay her actions. After a week, I had her go stay with her brother, things kept getting worse, and I broke up with her around Thanksgiving. We both started going to therapy, and barely spoke most of December. Now she wants to try couples therapy, to fix the relationship. When we were talking the other night, she said that she didn't feel guilty or regret sleeping with the other guy, until we broke up. That since it was a casual relationship, and I was open about not being interested in anything serious, she didn't view it as cheating. But now, she understands how hurtful and selfish her actions were, and that she should have been honest with me. She has since said that she did regret sleeping with him, but it just forced herself to not think about it for so long, that she forgot how guilty she felt. I have a hard time believing her, I don't really trust anything she says. It feels like she's just terrified of being alone, and just trying to string me along to get things back to normal. Since we started talking and seeing each other again around New Year's, she seemed genuine and sincerely regretful. She's making much more of an effort to work on herself and do more things for me. But, I don't really want to give her the benefit of the doubt that this effort will stick, because it's so hard to trust her. I think I would be okay if the relationship ends, but I also don't want to walk away from a 10-year relationship still in love with her. I was so excited to be married and ready to spend the rest of my life with her. Edit, she caught the STD early and it's been long gone. I've been tested a few times over the years just because, and have never had anything. I've been doing individual therapy since we broke up right before Thanksgiving. Now for the top advice. Aw oh man, what a thing to find out. The cynic in me has to ask, what do you suppose happened two years ago when she had the actual awakening? Was it the result of an affair? Was she all stirred up by another man? Have you asked her what happened? She only stopped seeing the other man because she got an STD. My how romantic for the two of you. And now she sees how it was wrong to sleep with another man and get an STD while dating you for seven months? That is some serious lack of empathy lack of kindness, just nasty behavior. She said it was because he was more attractive than me, and that she enjoyed the intercourse with him more. Okay, are you trolling? She actually told you this? 
100% not trolling, she actually said that. I was a late bloomer, and I'm definitely a lot more attractive now than I was at 20 or 21. She said that because I was bigger, nothing special, she would get sore, and couldn't enjoy rougher action with me, like with him. The actually awakening two years ago was because she ended up enjoying backdoor. We had tried it a few times years before, but she was very may about. So, I showed her the X subreddit, and had her read some articles. We started really slow with toys and she ended up really enjoying it. We were already pretty active in our intimate life, but that just kicked her into overdrive and we get up to all kinds of stuff now. Jesus, you were going down on her. Get tested for HPV, that stuff causes cancer. That is serious. Kick her the hell out. You know what's going on here. She doesn't regret the affair, she just doesn't want to lose you too. All she learned is she will need to hide it better. You should have zero faith that she will be loyal, and under no circumstances should you marry her. She failed the wife test miserably. If you marry her, you will only find it even harder to separate when she does this again. Cheaters all have common traits, it begins with selfishness and ends with words. When I say it ends with words, I mean that they will say anything they think will manipulate you to satisfy their selfish desires. She has spent 10 years learning about your desires, weaknesses, and triggers, and she will use all of this knowledge to get you exactly to this point. That point being, you doubting your decision to leave her. She will say it was a mistake and she has grown, and you can now trust her because she has changed. There is nothing in your story to suggest she has anything to offer in the form of reconciliation, that is anything more than words of a cheater and liar. Step carefully into this minefield. I actually have said that to her many times since all this started. Now for the next story. Wife of 5 years cheated and now I feel absolutely nothing for her. Nothing. And that scares me. Here are the key details. My, 34, wife, 32, Wendy and I met through friends 7 years ago, dated for 2 years and have been married for 5 years, just after I finished law school. I worked my tail off as an associate at my firm, putting in 60 hours a week for the first 2 years of our marriage. That effort paid off and I'm doing well professionally. Wendy was a teacher at a private school, but as soon as we got married, she quit so she could go back to school for her master's in education, and is currently in an educational doctoral program while working part-time. This was a bit of financial strain, since I wanted to pay off my student loans as quickly as possible, but we managed. My wife had an old laptop that she was using when we started dating. I found it in a box in a closet. She said it crashed, and wouldn't work any longer. I plugged it in, tried to turn it on. Nothing. When we met, Wendy took pictures of everything, primarily selfies of her with others. Knowing that she must have had some pictures of us from that time, I yanked the hard drive and looked at it. It seemed okay. The problem must have been somewhere else. Wanting to surprise her with pictures of when we first started dating, I waited until she left to go visit her sister before I plugged it into a SATA cable connector to my PC. There were pictures there. Plenty of pictures. Some were of us on dates, laughing, smiling. They brought back some good memories. But there were also others of her with different people. One person in particular I remembered. His name was Bob, and Wendy had dated him before me. There were lots of pictures of her and Bob. I wanted to grab only our pictures, so I thought the easiest way would be to organize them by date, figuring the latest pictures would be of only us. But when I clicked them by date, a lot of her pictures with Bob were jumbled up with pictures of us. I began to open the pictures one by one and noticed that in a few of her pictures with Bob, where they were cuddling and kissing, she was wearing a necklace slash locket that I had given her as a birthday present in the second year we were dating. I had to borrow the money from my brother to buy it. I looked at the dates on the pictures, and a pattern emerged, on the days and weekends when school required my undivided attention, the times when she went to her mother's house, or her sister's house to give me peace and quiet, she was meeting up with Bob behind my back. I was furious. It felt like fire ants were chewing on my brain, my heart, in my guts. I wanted to punch through the walls, but then, something snapped and I went numb. I began to see and think in very cold, analytical terms. I copied all of her pics, all of them, not just those I'd seen, to a flash drive. I packed a bag, grabbed some suits, took the thumb drive, and went to stay with my brother across town. I left her laptop hard drive plugged into my PC with a picture of her kissing Bob on the monitor. The only note I left behind was a sticky note with an arrow on it pointing to the necklace slash locket. Wendy tried to call me from her mother's house, if that's where she really was, but I didn't answer. 
It wasn't until a few hours later, after she presumably got back to her apartment and saw the picture on the monitor that she blew up my phone with voicemails and texts. I ignored them all. I've already met with another associate who works in the family law department about separation and divorce. We have no children or real property, since a lot of our money went to paying off my loans and for her tuition. My firm circled the wagons around me, so her calls go to voicemails. She's not allowed onto the property, security already turned her away. Wendy tracked me down at my brother's house, but he made it clear to her on the phone, that if she tries to come over, he'll set his Dobermans on her. He told me she was screaming, sobbing, and begging on the phone. It didn't make me sad or happy or anything. I felt nothing. My marriage is over. I've accepted that. But it's been two days and I still feel nothing. No pain. No anger. Nothing. How is it possible that I have no more feelings for her, no desire to ever see her again? no desire to reconcile. Now that I'm alone with my thoughts, feeling this nothing for her, scares me. Is this going to last? Am I still in shock? Am I permanently broken? The upside is that, I've never seen clear resolutions in my cases. Now for the top advice. I am sorry man this happened to you, a good thing is that, you found out before any children involved. I am not going to lie man, I would do the same thing and never look back. Though I think eventually you will meet with her and her sob story, I was lonely, it was nothing, I realized I love only you etc. A person capable of hurting you that way, worth not another second of your life. As for feeling nothing, it's the shock of finding out that the person you love never existed. It's a self-defense mechanism that unfortunately will wear off and the pain will come. Shield yourself with loved ones to get through it. Mourn her then like she died, and move on to someone worthy. I was lonely. It was nothing. You know, to me, this is even worse. To cheat on your partner and break their heart over a supposedly meaningless fling, would hurt me more than if my significant other fell in love with someone else, because sometimes feelings catch you by surprise, and that euphoria is hard to resist. Disclaimer, cheating is bad no matter what. I'm not excusing it in any way. The opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. As a fellow lawyer, I understand how hard the work-life balance can be. At least you should be able to make a clean break and move on. The lack of hate or anger isn't necessarily a bad sign for you or your future relationships, just your current marriage. All the best. The opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. The truth. Just stop caring about them. Hate shows that you have them on your mind. But indifference makes their existence blur away. It's only been two days. Maybe you are still in shock? Best advice at this point would be individual counseling. Good luck. This, but also having experienced something similar myself, a lot of our ideals about who our partner is as a person, shapes our feelings for them, when you find out something that completely shatters that ideal, it's like the person you love stops existing, never existed, and the person left in front of you is a total stranger. It's been 6 years since my 9 year relationship ended, and I still have not cried over it. There was a small window where I missed them about 8 months out, but it was only because dating was an emotional pain in the neck and I missed the stability, and the distance started to rebuild some of those false ideals. Luckily, I did not entertain that rabbit hole, and my life is so much happier than I ever was before with that partner. Now for the last story. Pregnant wife cheated. My wife and I have been married three years, and have a two-year-old son, with a very recent pregnancy, 10 weeks, for our next baby. We both work from home, and have been locked down for the past year almost, so living and seeing each other every day, none of which I am complaining about, I actually love being with the family. There are other stressors in my life though, I have low self-esteem, I stress about money, I stress about my extended family's health, I stress about my job. But I try not to let any of this affect my family life, at least with my son. My wife is fully aware of the stress I feel though, I have expressed I am stressed enough times, and I accept most of it cannot be changed at this time, COVID. My wife and I are open with each other on everything, at least I thought, and we both have our faces registered for unlocking on each other's phones, face ID. I had full trust in her and never once doubted anything she was doing on her phone, no matter the hour or even lack of response while she was on social media. I let her have it, because I fully trusted her. Cut to last week, and I was just bringing her phone to her from another room. The phone was lying down flat, and I turned the screen to face me like I generally do expecting to see her home screen pic of our son, instead it opened to her photo gallery, and I found some barely clothed pics, and one incriminating one of her lying down and slightly pulling her underwear. 
I didn't want to believe what I was seeing and handed her the phone. But it was killing me, and I had to confront her, to ask what those pics were. This is where the lies start. Her first response was to just say, I want to feel good about myself before I get the bump, from pregnancy. I called BS on that, and said you don't take pics in those poses for that. She confessed that she was sending them to someone, but that's all it led to. I didn't want to know who or how it happened, I was coming to just process everything. I chose to ignore it for that day, mostly because I was in shock, and also had to take care of our toddler. I was distant the whole day, not wanting to be with her, I wanted space. I browsed Reddit, Quora, any forum for info or advice that night, I had no one to talk to, and nowhere to go in lockdown. I barely slept, and the next day I demanded to know who it was. Turns out it was a guy from work, and they had been using their work team's chat to communicate. I asked her how far it went, and she said just the pictures, nothing more. I suspected more BS, and then asked to see the chats on Teams, and on Instagram. She was hesitant, she didn't want to show me in fear of not wanting to hurt me, yay I know, should have called it. I was getting more upset, but wanted to give her the benefit of doubt, but I told her I cannot continue until I see the messages. She gave more excuses of not wanting to hurt me, but I was beginning to see a pattern. The next day was a work day, and because we share an office in our house, I could see a few times she was furiously typing away on a Teams chat. No guesses who it was. I confronted her after work, and she still did not want to show the messages. I gave up, I told her I need to see this otherwise we are separating. She came to me the following day and confessed that she lied, they did meet, twice, and the last time was a week earlier when all they did was kiss. I got incensed, how could she? I knew they didn't just kiss, and compounded with all the trickle truths, it was even crazier to think I'd believe that. I demanded then and there to show me the chats. I knew she had deleted the messages on Instagram, and the slimy affair partner was trying to purge his chat messages. The sheer volume of messages was telling, I was reading messages for a whole two hours, going back three months. It started off flirty, then crossed a line becoming actually charged, even expressing how they would screw each other. She was pining for him on the chats, and what was the worst was that, they both stated what they were doing was wrong, but continued with it. Now, we're in lockdown here, so can't really go out, except for groceries etc., yet these two decided their escapade was worthy enough to forego the lockdown, and our marriage. We've been fighting every day since, I don't think she's remorseful, even though she says she is. She is becoming headstrong, suggesting that she also has her feelings, and that she doesn't have to live like this, by this, I mean me looking through her phone now, not trusting her. She blames the affair on me not being intimate with her, not giving her the attention she needs. I tell her she has broken me, and thrown away our marriage, but she wants me to just get through it so we can mend the relationship. Writing this down, it feels like I am being a chump and taking all this, maybe I am just weak, but I am scared of how our children will be as I love them so much. We have marriage counseling in two days, I am bracing myself for the criticism from her, and if she uses that as an excuse for what she did. I need some guidance on what to do, should we separate? I am afraid I am not that financially stable to endure it and we have a baby going to be born soon. How can I build trust when she's gaslighting? Sorry if this is long, I have no other outlet for my grief. Now for the top advice. I'd hope the child is yours, because it just seems to close for comfort. Once all trust is lost, you need to move on, sorry. Or, start the arduous journey of reconciliation. However, your wayward wife has to feel remorse in order for reconciliation. 1. Get STD tested. 2. Scrap couples counseling. Get individual counseling. 3. Read the book, No More Mr. Nice Guy. 4. Get DNA test done on your kid. If possible, for current pregnancy also. 5. Tell her you need to separate right now. 6. Read article on doing 180 and surviving infidelity.com. 7. Don't leave the house. 8. Keep the evidence as your insurance. 9. Tell her you are going to talk to a lawyer and do it. These are the steps you should start with. And remember, you can stop a divorce if you think she is remorseful enough to be taken back. Right now, she is blaming you for her affair, which is blame shifting. Try to understand, you did nothing to cause her affair, and it was not a mistake. She willingly scripted and executed the affair process. Good luck. I would just like to add, they both even admitted what they were doing was wrong. There is a non-evasive paternity test that can be done, now that she is over 8 weeks. 
and I would advise her HR department of the affair, as they were sharing nudes or at least actual messages through team chat. Also, if he is married or in a relationship, his significant other should also be told. Get a DNA test first. 2. One for the unborn baby and another for the already born one. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.